my respected chairperson, especially Madam Fazila Madam, and the distinct interventionalists of the country. The job of a uh, cardiac ultrasound sonologist is very simple. It's to find out the inducible myocardial ischemia. If a patient do have inducible myocardial ischemia, this patient is going to get benefit with revascularization. It is a simple job. But at the times, we need to know about the viability. And in more, more recent days, since we have CT, CT angiogram along with non-invasive FFR, so the anatomical imaging along with the uh, functional imaging gives the alternative, uh, alternative uh, evidence of myocardial ischemia. So we have all these modalities. modalities. We have the stress ECG, known as ETT, the stress echocardiography, SPECT, PET, MRI. And as I, as I have said, the equal, equally important uh, the tool, non-invasive tool nowadays is CT angiogram. So as I said, I will be dealing with my, my case. My first case was 64 years old male. Uh, he had an attack of myocardial infarction. Uh, we selected to do a double-time stress echo in our laboratory. Uh, if you look at the images, from resting images to low-dose images and to the peak dose, you'll be, find, you'll be able to find out that there is biphasic response. Uh, there was motion in the low dose, and it again become hypokinetic at the peak, at the peak dose. We call it biphasic response. When dobutamine stress echo shows a biphasic response, it has got very high sensitivity and specificity of the fact that this patient is going to get benefit from uh, revascularization. Even we do not need to know how much scar is there in the myocardial tissue. Because uh, to, if the patient do have amount of scar in the myocardial portion is more than 50 percent, the, the dobutamine stress echo will not be positive. So we have to also be also consider to this, uh, to this image that if we do permission, uh, perfusion imaging, permission, sorry, perfusion imaging is capable of showing the, um, showing the uh, ischemic zone and viable zone, but it, do, it does not allow us to know fully about the extent of scar. With a patient, for a patient with myocardial infarction, if you, if you, if we have, if we, really can bring some meaning to their life, there has to be viable myocardium of more than 50%, which again cannot be that much assessed by uh, uh, nuclear imaging. So the ultimate frontier for a patient with myocardial infarction is, as Ajay has said, the MRI. Our second case was a lady who was referred to us for, uh, for Preoperative assessment while undergoing non-cardiac uh, non surgery, and as you can see in this, uh, uh, in the resting echo, the patient was having global hyperkinesia. Actually, these are the cases that we that we that we meet in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, these are the patient have we call sometimes we call them as ischemic cardiomyopathy. They are having heart failure. And we really do not know whether revascularization will give any benefit to them. So again, for this patient, we arranged a, a dobutamine stress echo. And as I said, my images are not that, that great. But you'll be able to find out there was gradual increment of the motion. Uh, when dobutamine stress echo was given, even in this picture, if you, if you look at the final uh, peak uh, peak image, you will find, and if you compare it from the resting image, that there was gradual inc incremental motion. We call it monophasic response. Actually, we were dealing with a case of stunning myocardium. We are not dealing with ischemic myocardium. It was not ischemic myocardium, it was stunning myocardium that showed the hyperkinesia. So for this patient, revascularization will not give, give any benefit. So our third case, uh, she, she was a patient um, 
who was admitted in in one of the hospital one of the one of the government hospital in uh, dhaka this patient had anterior myocardial infarction he she underwent coronary angiogram there was a significant led lesion but the pci at that time was deferred because this patient was having huge thrombus burden in the left anterior descending art artery for his financial constraint he was uh, he was he, he got admitted in our hospital we also planned to have an uh, angioplasty done for her but in the meantime we decided to see whether there was any viable portion uh, of myocardium in led territory so again we did uh, drug administration in this patient and if you look at the uh, led territory it was akinetic in the rest and the akinesia the akinesia share did not improve even with uh, maximum stress we can see rest of the rest of the um, lv segment was moving so smartly but the led territory were still akinetic so for this patient we thought that in some cases when we miss uh, when you find akinesia in the utamin stress echo the final frontier is mri uh, or the the other frontier could be uh, positron emission tomography so we had uh, mri uh, facilities in one of the private diagnostic center where one of our colleague works so uh, you can see in this in uh, <coughs> in this mri image that there was some motion in the led territory so it was not akinetic as we found in the abutum in stress echo but as we moved on in left gadolinium uh, scanning you can see this is this is normal thickness of the normal myocardium and if you compare this with the scar tissue here you can find that more more than more than 50% about 70% of scar tissue was there uh, in that patient so had this patient not thrombus in the led on the first instance where he underwent when she underwent coronary angiogram she would have an pci pci done so please remember when you are dealing with a patient of, with all myocardial infarction please look at the portion of the viral myocardium all these cases that i am showing here are being collected from here from bangladesh so now time has come when we can make some justice to our patient so be my my request to my interventional cardiologist to become little gracious so this is the basic principle when we have biphasic response we call it uh, we call it hibernating myocardium these are the myocardium cardium that is going to get maximum benefit from revascularization when we have monophasic response this is stunning myocardium by no means revascularization is going to help this patient and when we do have no response possibly this is dead myocardium non viable myocardium so so if we, we if we <coughs> uh, we have pet uh, pet facilities in bangladesh some of our nuclear guys are doing this uh, this and they're doing some nice job and if you find this uh, uh, <coughs> this variation in the images uh, then you will be able to find out the differentiation between the viable stunning and the uh, non viable portion uh, the important thing that has been noted in this image is if you look at the uh, perfusion image in in this case had this patient underwent spect only uh, we would have missed the viable portion so dobutamin stress and spect at a times can detect non viable portion which becomes viable with mri or a pet so there may be some use of pet and mri in some patients not all the patients in majority of the cases you can solve your cases in the, into the dobutamin stress laboratory even in your normal echo or in normal ecg that can give you clue that this patient is going to get benefit from revascularization so this is my fourth case uh, this is the case that that we really encounter uh, in our day to day life Uh, and with the advent of uh, troponin high sense so called high sensitive troponin possibly you all get more and more cases of non stmi non stmi has become so prevalent nowadays so and again among this non stmi uh, we know the some of them if 
if we do the grace score and they belong into the high risk and the intermediate risk, we put them into cath lab and do the intervention. But there are patients who do not have chest pain, who don't have changes in the ST segments, and their troponin are not that high. They're low risk, non-ST, SCS patients. Uh, they can go for some form of uh, imaging, some form of stress test. And as we can see in this slide, the ESC guideline for imaging plus one is stress imaging. And alternative to this is CT angiogram. So for this patient, uh, we, we did uh, stress amazing. We had a stress echo in, in, in our lab, bicycle, um, bicycle stress echo. Uh, and, and the finding of this, uh, this, this stress echo was uh, the patient showed no evidence of inducible ischemia. And if you, if you look at the uh, peak dose, the heart is uh, contracting so smartly and you can easily uh, make a conclusion that this patient was having no, uh, no inducible myocardial ischemia. So the, the test that we are doing in our laboratory, the bicycle ergometer, which is superior than the SPECT, and we are used to doing, we are used to with echocardiography. So it is, it is our skill in echocardiography that prompted us to deferring our, to refer our patient to the SPECT. So had this patient could go to the PET, that could be little, little, little superior. Or if the patient would have CT scan, CT angiogram along with FFR, that would have been better. But right at this moment, we are satisfied with doing the bicycle stress echo, which yields at least 80 to 85 percent sensitivity, much closer to that of MRI or PET. So this is our final case. Again, a patient with stable angina. The case that we, again, we meet in, the, in, in our uh, chamber, in our practice. This pretest probability is a little older, but uh, I'm fond of this, uh, this, uh, this probability picture because it gives me so many information. The, uh, the probability that falls into the region of, uh, uh, the region of light light rate of the patient who should undergo relatively better imaging tests like PET or CT, CT, CT angiogram, but we are happy with doing the bicycle or the treadmill echocardiography. So this patient, my patient, she, he was 60 years old, old, retired professor, was having angina during, uh, uh, during walking. We were a little concerned about his probability score. Uh, it, it could be it could be, sorry, it could be anywhere between 84 to uh, 68. So we were a little concerned about uh, this patient and we decided to, again for this, this sort of patient, the recommendation, class one recommendation by ASC is stress imaging of CT. Sorry. So we went for, uh, treadmill echocardiography for this patient. Uh, again, the image is not that great, but surely we'll be able to find out the motion is normal at the peak exercise. So what we got from this patient, this patient, we got the, the result of the treadmill. The f patient had a good, good functional capacity. He didn't have any ST segment depression during walking the treadmill. And at the same time, on the echocardiography, we found very smart wall motion. So if you look at this chart, which, which is integrating the uh, wall motion score and the ST segment score all together, and if you really assess the risk uh, for this for my patient, he's a retired professor of surgery, uh, I was confident that I have given him a good suggestion that he should maintain a lifestyle modification a risk factor modification and, and he will do well. Again, having saying that, it would, I, I would have done better if, if I could do a stress pet for this patient or if we had CT angiogram with FFR. So our uh, post-treadmill exercise is as good as bicycle ergometer and in a lot of our center, we do, have, we do have the treadmill and the echo side by side. 
and we can do this test regularly. So that's all. Thank you very much for the patient hearing.